Hey guys, thank you for stopping back at the Pizza Garage. Now, we're going to start disassembling our engine, but before I do, I want to take some measurements. And the first measurement I want to take is cylinder pressure. I want to see how much pressure the cylinders are holding to see if there's any problems anywhere uh, within the engine that I can tell from pressure. Now, I'll be taking out the spark plugs, and we'll see what the spark plugs can tell us about how this engine's been running. And I'll keep them in order, 1357, 2468. And if you're ever wondering how to find the number one cylinder on your engine, or how do you know what number one is, if you look at it from the side here, and if you look straight down, you can see that this, this cylinder head is slightly ahead. So if I were to draw a straight line here, you can see this piston is further ahead. That's because the connecting rod for this cylinder right here is in front. So number one cylinder is always the one cylinder that's further ahead. So you look here, it'd be 1357, 2468. Depending on how your uh, engines are numbered, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, depending on the brand. But this is numbered 1357, 2468. So we'll take the plugs out and we'll see what the plugs can tell us. Now I have all the spark plugs removed and before we look at those I want to test cylinder pressure to see what condition the rings are in and, and if, see if there's any leaky valves. Now there's a couple ways you can do that. If you have the engine in the vehicle uh, I usually use a snap-on, my snap-on leak, leak down detector and this simply is something where you would take you get the engine to operating temperature so you want it hot you get your piston top dead center you would screw this in and then you'd put air pressure in here pressurize the cylinder and then it would check the leak down rate of the cylinder so you check what's leaking down that you have an exhaust valve intake valve are the rings leaking so that, that's one way to do it if you have this gauge right here and this is fairly expensive so if you don't have one of those uh, you can just measure cylinder pressure and I'm gonna measure cylinder pressure and this is just a gauge a simple gauge a compression tester and it just has a o-ring on it and it goes into the spark plug hole and it's very simple to use you just screw it into the the spark plug hole and you want to make sure that you don't get any dirt in there because you don't want any dirt to seat on the uh, the o-ring that seals the compression tester so there we go I got it started and you don't have to crank it on there because there is an o-ring it's going to seal and I have my starter hooked up the uh, starter is hooked up to a battery so all I have to do is turn this over a few times and watch the needle and the needle will go up and when it stops going up I know I've reached maximum pressure for that cylinder after a few cycles Okay, after a few strokes, this uh, cylinder pressure is 75 PSI. So this uh, cylinder number, uh, which this is 2, 2, 4, 6, 8. Cylinder 2 is holding pressure at 75 PSI. That's what it pressures up to cold. I'm checking my, my cold pressure. Now I can release the air, and I can go to the next cylinder. I'll do this for all eight cylinders, and I'll write it down, and we'll take a look at the plugs and what the pressure tests say. So that was 75. Let's see what our next plug. Okay, 75. 75 for number four. Keep it nice and clean. Okay, next. That one's really low. That one's only 55. 
75, 75, 55. So we got low pressure and cylinder number six. Okay, number eight will be the last one. That's only 70. 75, 75, 50, 70. So now I'll go do the other side the same way. All right, so here's the pressures, and we'll look at the plugs, and we'll see what the plugs can tell us. Cylinder 1 had pressure 70 PSI, and that plug looks like it might be running okay. Maybe just a little bit on the lean side. You can see the plug is a little, uh, a little rusty. Cylinder number three, 70 PSI, not running too bad, electrode looks pretty good, ceramic looks pretty good. Cylinder five, 65 PSI, so less PSI here, less pressure. And we can see that the plug is a little dirty, so that, uh, that cylinder is running a little rich or, or burning oil, so I would expect to see some uh, ring problems in there when we take the heads off, could be a leaky valve. And, uh, I anticipate all of the head the uh, valve stem seals to be leaking on all of these. And cylinder 7 on the left side of the engine, 75 PSI. That plug doesn't look too bad. And then we come over here. Cylinder 2, first one on the right side. Plug doesn't look too bad. That plug doesn't look too bad at all. Cylinder 4, 75 PSI. That plug is not looking all too awful. Now look at this one, cylinder 6 measured at 55 PSI and that plug is pretty dirty. Not only that, the electrode is round, 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 uh, rounded off, sorry about that. So I would expect that cylinder to look pretty bad when we look in it. So cylinder 6 should be bad and cylinder 8 was at 80, I'm sorry, 70 PSI and that may have been running a little bit lean. So we're going to have to look at all of the uh, the, head, the uh, cylinders, see what we're having. So it looks like Right now it looks like five, cylinders 5 and 6 are low, so those would be the worst two out of all of them. Also, if I look at the bottom of the, exhaust, uh, bottom of the intake manifold, it looks like here, see that gasket is completely uh, blown away. So there was an exhaust leak in the intake manifold, right where the heat riser is for the carburetor. Uh, the other side doesn't look too bad, so that gasket wasn't sealed too bad. I don't know how long this gasket was on here but that gasket is burned pretty bad. So a pretty significant exhaust leak and this would be on the passenger side so I would anticipate that on the passenger side smelling a little more of exhaust. If we go and look at the engine itself and we look at here I'm sorry uh, yeah on the passenger side so right in the middle so there's the exhaust leak there's a witness mark where the exhaust was leaking and it would have been leaking from here into the center of the engine blowing straight back into the uh, passenger compartment. So there's our, there's our witness mark. We had an exhaust leak. The gasket on both sides doesn't look too bad except for where it blew out and we had that exhaust leak. Okay, so at this point I can pull the transmission off. I can get the engine on the uh, stand, uh, the engine stand, and we can start taking it apart see what we come up with. Alright, now that I have the pressure test done, I looked at all my gaskets, I looked at the uh, spark plugs. I can jack it up and I can start to take the transmission off. I gotta get up high enough in the air so I can get underneath the torque converter and take off the bolts. I'll start by taking off my starter. Nice thing about uh, working on these older cars is everything's the same size three quarters of an inch, half inch. These sizes are pretty common, so it's like you got a bunch of different size bolts. You can probably take this whole car apart with two or three wrenches. And 
tire should come off. Look at the starter gear. The starter gear looks pretty good. Not chewed up. That's in pretty good shape. Now in order to get to the flex plate here, I gotta take off this inspection plate on the bottom. Okay. Now, that'll give me a little access to the I got the flywheel there. So now I can let me take a look at that and I can turn it and start to take off the uh, Okay, now this is interesting. In order to get the uh, torque converter off the flywheel, the bolts are inside the bell housing, which is real thick. I mean, there's a ton of bolts on these things. This thing is built like a tank. So in order to get the torque converter off, it assumes you have the transmission off. So there's four bolts. They are uh, 5 eighths bolts. And it assumes you have the transmission already off. So you have to take the transmission off the bell housing. So I'm going to take out these four bolts. I have, they're all the same size, four bolts. And I will slide the transmission. Of the torque converter. Just like that. And there you can hear all my coolant running out. I gotta fix that. Okay, now that I have the, the gear cases off the front, that came right off, the transmission came right off. I can take off the bell housing, take off the seven bolts holding the bell housing on. Start to clean it up and dry the bell housing off. A couple taps from a dead little hammer. Starting to come off. There's pins on each side here, guide pins that are uh, holding it so I can go around it gently with a screwdriver and start to pull the bell housing out away from the block. been on there for 50 years. It's a little, it's a little tough. And the bell housing just slides right off. Just like that. Now the torque converter can come off. There's four bolts on the back here. I'll take those four bolts off and I'll be able to take the torque converter off. Then I can get to the bolts to take the flex plate off. Okay, there's six bolts holding the torque converter on. Take on one at a time. I got the last one and torque converter. There we go. Comes right off. Okay. Now, looks like we got some studs. We can take this off. The back of the flywheel. I'm sorry, back of the crankshaft. Then I'll be able to put it on the uh, put it on the engine stand. I put the uh, engine stand up to the block here, and there's enough room between the crank and there, so I mounted the mounted the um, engine stand to the block. Now I can lower my lower my engine on my hoist. Let the let the weight gradually take up on the engine stand to make sure it's going to hold. And there. 
Okay. Now, now the engine is resting on the engine stand. I can take away my hoist and we can really take a look at the engine. All right, so it took a lot to get the engine to this point, at least get it on the stand, get it ready to disassemble and inspect. So what I'll do is I'll make these videos short so you don't have to sit and watch them for hours and hours and hours to see progress. I'll end it here and then uh, the next video will actually be tearing down the engine, pull off, pull it all apart, take out the components and inspect them. But we got to do a lot. We got to look at the cylinder pressure, look at the spark plugs, look at the intake, found an exhaust leak, um, measured the uneven pressure. We know that cylinder 5 and 6 are going to be a problem so it'll be interesting to see what they look like inside. Uh, I'm going to suspect we're going to see a lot of uh, oil on the valves inside the heads. A lot of things that go along with 135,000 miles and 58 years of, uh, of running. So, uh, if you have any questions or you can help me out, if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment. All you Studebaker guys out there are really great. I appreciate all your help and comments so far. Text messages. Uh, this has been a lot of fun and talking to you guys has been a lot of fun. And I appreciate all your help. Uh, and I appreciate the project. Some of you guys have some really nice cars. It's really, really cool. Thanks for sharing those with me. And I share them with everybody if I can. If you send me pictures, I'll share them on Facebook and I'll share them, uh, share videos if I can. So, we'll get into tearing this down, measuring it, and um, we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.